Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, HCAT in Holliston. We are the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Steve Watson will be joining us as well. Connor Donovan on camera for what should be a great matchup between 11 and 0 Ashland post 77 and 6 and 3 Lowell post 87. Ashland is the away team here today. This game was supposed to take place at Lowell's Memorial Field, but due to some uh, <laughs> due to some issues. conflict and field issues. The game is being held here at Ashland Middle School. So Ashland gets an extra home game pretty much, but they are the away team today, so they will bat first. Let's take a look at the post-77 lineup. Nick Calabrese, the center fielder, batting first. Kevin Balowitz, the left fielder, hitting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the right fielder, hitting cleanup. Sean Jouette, the catcher hitting fifth. Drew Rancatori, the DH hitting sixth. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman hitting seventh. Ben Fink, the third baseman hitting eighth. And Matt Tomaselli, the first baseman hitting ninth against Lowell's Zach Gishier with the post 87 defense. Here is Larry Sacklad. Thank you and good evening everybody. At third base, Pat Crowley, Tyler Hoey at shortstop, Luke Silva playing second base, Thomas Hassett at first base, Brendan DeMarco in left, Edgar Velasquez in center, John Mercury in right field. Kyle DeRoma catching tonight, Zach Gisher. One with the good moss, as Dennis Eckersley would say. <laughs> and there you have it, the Lowell defense. The last time these two teams met was back on June 26th, and post-77 pulled off the victory in that game. And it was quite an impressive victory. It was close yeah. for a while. Then it got broken nope. open. Yep. And post-77 remains undefeated. The final score in that last little game was 10-3. Post-77 pulling off the win. Here is Nick Calabrese to start things off for Ashland. They are fresh off a 17-3 win last night over Hudson as the first pitch is in there for a strike. Oh, and one. Shall we get into last night's game? Oh, fans? I'm sure <laughs> we will. It was all kinds of craziness. Fouled away. Oh, and two. Well, <laughs> there was a whole lot of stories from last night's game, but the big story, at least in my opinion, was the 11 run sixth inning for post 77. That just led them to a dominant win as this is up the middle, past the reach of the pitcher, bobbled by the second baseman, throw to first, not in time. The worst field in all of American Legion baseball, the Ashland Middle School field. Oh, that's and that's the advantage for the Ashland Post 77 Ball Club. Well, that's it's a big advantage to be playing on your home field, especially when you know how to play it. And there's certainly some obstacles here on this infield. <laughs> So, is there ever. So Calabrese reaches on the bobble. Balowitz will step in. Calabrese with a bit of a lead. First pitch inside. Dom Cavanaugh almost lost an eye the other night of trying to feel the ball at third base. Just popped over his shoulder. Gishier set to deal. Check in at first. Runner back safe. Guaranteed that's not his best move. Gishier set to deliver. Swing and a miss. One and one. Jackson Horning back in the lineup tonight. He'll be playing shortstop for post 77 and he is on deck. He was vacationing down the Dominican Republic. Well, his teammates were playing ball. That pitch down low. Well, they held their own. They did. Well, he was on vacation, so. Certainly a uh, nice situation to come back to. Jake Obed's been very aggressive with his base runners this season. Here's the 2-1. Taking a long time to deliver. 
Swing and a miss. Two and two. I thought he would have called timeout there because he was taking so long to go to the plate. Balowitz I'm talking about. And this is hit high in the air out of play. Count remains two and two. I believe we saw Gisher last year, Tom, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you are correct. Just hasn't been to the barber since, that's all. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's just my commentary. Balowitz was hitting six last night. He's moved up to the second spot in the lineup. Wind up and the pitch, up high, full count. Balowitz had a pretty good night last night. Went two for five at the plate. Also reached on an error and scored two runs. Probably walked three times. Walked once, I believe. And this is up the left side, throw to second for one. No, it gets away. Everybody's safe. Shall I say it? A low throw. <laughs> So the second error of the game for post 87, that'll bring up Jackson Hornung. The haunted infield of Ashland Middle School. Paying that, off. That should have been uh, just an easy pick by the second baseman, but as Cole Glassburn knows, the field out here is, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Old post 87 is led by head coach Kyle Gaff. He's in his first year at the helm, he spent Five or six years as an assistant coach for post 87. Watching BP before he got here, Tom Jackson Horning. Didn't miss a beat. He was hitting balls off the fence. Well, maybe he was getting some practice down in the Dominican. No, that's not what he told me off to the side out of ear ear shot. <laughs> Horning steps in. His first plate appearance of the week. And he'll foul that one away. Oh, and one. Well, a whole lot of Ashland Legion baseball coming up next week. Ashland taking on Bill Ricca on Sunday, 4 p.m. game right here at Ashland Middle School. As Hornung will drive this into left field, that'll get down for a hit. Lead runner being waved around. Here comes Calabrese. Balowitz also going to be waved around. He will score as well. And Hornung all the way to third, a stand up triple and two RBIs for Jackson Hornung. Welcome back, Jackson. Oh, that was a little fielding mistake on Gisher's part. He had no chance. Backing up home, those runners were going to score, so he should have been backing up third, and the first baseman should have been backing up home. But now the infield's going to come in all the way around and try and cut the runner. The only one that's not in on the grass is the shortstop, strike one. So a 2 nothing lead, four post 77. Dom Cavanaugh, the cleanup man, in the batter's box. He almost had two home runs last night. Check swing, but it was a strike. You had those home run calls ready last night, Tom. Oh, I did. There was a couple that were close. Kavanaugh did have two doubles and a walk. He had three RBIs and scored two runs. One and two count now. And those doubles were long. Oh, yes. They were certainly tattooing the ball in Hudson. Especially in that sixth inning. Yeah. Nine hits in the 11 run inning as there is a strikeout, one away. No, is it a foul? Nope. All right, Kavanaugh was arguing for a foul, but the umpire says no. Sean Jewett will step in. And he has just been on fire with the bat lately. Last night he was two for three and scored a run pair of singles for Jewett. Swing and a miss. He was uh, in the middle of the uh, action last uh, last night. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Certainly was. His video the post -game evidence. post-game action. 
Jewett hitting a 593 this season, fouls that one away, 0 and 2. So Jackson Horning over at third base, two runs have scored, four post 77. It's a two nothing lead, runner on third, one out. Horning just itching to score a third run. And Jewett will put this one in the air over to right field and it is caught. Horning's gonna tag and think twice about it. And he will go back to third, a good throw in from John Mercury. So that'll bring up Drew Rankatori, the DH today. The Hopkinton Hiller. Yeah, they had him out in right field earlier at BP, which you weren't here for. Uh, out right field, but he just can't run. He's got to let that groin heal. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Gishier has perhaps settled down a bit since a couple of mishaps by the Lowell defense to start off the game. He hasn't given up an earned run yet. No, he has not. And this is hit in the air over to the second baseman and it's caught. So after a pair of errors, a two RBI triple by Horning, they go down one, two, three, but it is a two nothing post 77 lead as we head to the bottom of the first on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the first inning, post 77 leading Lowell, two to nothing. We are at Ashland Middle School, but post 77 is the away team today due to a field conflict in Lowell. They had to play this game at Ashland Middle School. Temperature today, 77 degrees, partly cloudy. Rain expected late tonight, but we should be fine for this game. Let's take a look at the post 87 lineup. Edgar Velasquez, the center fielder, will start things off. Thomas Hassett, the first baseman, batting second. Kyle DeRoma, the catcher, hitting third. Tyler Hoey, the shortstop, hitting cleanup. John Donovan, the DH, hitting fifth. John Mercury, the right fielder hitting sixth. Brendan DeMarco, the left fielder, hitting seventh. Pat Crowley, the third baseman, hitting eighth. Luke Silva, the second baseman, hitting ninth. And they will all face Owen Ward with the post-77 defense. Here is Larry Sacklad. The star of last night's game, Ben Fink. We'll talk about that a little later. The Fink play. Jackson Hornig at shortstop. Cole Glassburn at second base. Matt Tomaselli is first baseman tonight, left or right. Kevin Bellitz, Nick Calabrese, Dom Cavanaugh got put out in right field late. Behind the plate is uh, Sean Jewett. Pitching tonight is a pop-up to the right side. Tomaselli's under it, Ooh. and he drops it. Fair ball. Throw over to Ward. Did he get there in time? Yes, he did. Oh, and Ward taking care of business. He did. That's well, awful. mishap by Thomas Selly, but Ward able to get there, and they get the out. Oh, I'll just mention that Owen Ward's pitching to finish the uh, Ashland defense. Good timing. That was very heads up. So that was what, a three to one out? Thomas Hassett will step in. Well, it starts things off ugly. Errors all around. Errors for Ashland. Errors for Lowell. Well, they got the out, so I'm not going to put it down as an error. There's a strike. All right, you do what you want with the scorebook. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an error in Little League. And this is ripped into right field. That'll get down four, a base hit by Thomas Hassett. A one-out single. Good hitter, that kid, Hassett. That'll bring up Kyle DeRoma, the catcher, who's another pretty good hitter for Lowell. Yeah, he's all right. Put him in a three hole. Owen Ward has thrown 11 innings so far this season. Four post 77. There's a strike. He's given up one earned run. It's pretty good. He has a .64 ERA. Wind up and the pitch. Just a tad outside, one and one. 
talking to him before the game, his pitch mix is about 55% fastballs, about 30% curves, and throws quite a few change-ups. Ward set to deal, runner from first taken off, and this is up the left side, handled by Horning, throw to first, no problem. Hassett does advance, but they get the six to three out, two away, that'll bring up Tyler Hoey, the shortstop. And that's the benefit of knowing your home field, knowing where the gopher holes are, and Jackson's been playing on this field for the last four or five years anyway. Tyler Hoey in the cleanup spot tonight for Lowell. Line up and the pitch, down low. Last night's place uh, where the ball game was played was, I don't know, you'd call it a baseball field or an insane asylum. <laughs> it was probably closer to an insane asylum. And this is hit high in the air, foul territory, Tomaselli going for it, and he'll make the catch. That'll be the third and final out of the first inning. We'll head to the top of the second, post 77, with a two to nothing lead on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, seven, eight, and nine due up for post 77. Cole Glassburn, Ben Fink, Matt Tomaselli, and yes, it's the top of the second inning. Keep in mind, post 77, the away team here at Ashland Middle School today. Due to a field conflict at Lowell, this game being held right here in Ashland. There's a strike. Yeah, Cole Glassburn texted me at 11 o'clock last night. He wanted to know whether last night's game had been posted yet because he wanted to see his triple. I had to inform him. That was a hard hit ball, but this one's not, but it is going to take an awkward roll, but the speedy Gish here picks it up and tags first. I give him the bad news that his ball hooked really foul, so you only got a little bit of it, and the rest of it got blocked out, so. I, that was close. He went to bed. Ben Fink will step in. What's that, uh, one unassisted ground out there. And what is Glassburn having a conversation with the umpire that he reached first? No, whether he, it went off his foot. Ah. Ben Fink will step in, the third baseman. He had a good day yesterday. He walked three times and scored three runs. And? Also drove in a run with one of those walks. Must see TV is to watch last oh. night's game to see and the funkiest play. Yes. The highlights will be out tonight, folks. We'll have highlights from all three games this week, and there's some incredible stuff that will be in that highlights package. That you'll never, ever see the rest of your life. There's a strike. And Fink was in the middle of it. Fink had a tremendous defensive play. <laughs> There's another strike, one and two. And the home plate umpire had a tremendous call on that tremendous. And he'll strike out, two away. Play. Matt Tomaselli will step in, the first baseman. Well, this year, some pretty good velocity and good breaking ball. Tomaselli hitting a 250 so far on the season, 20 at bats. I don't want to say anything, Tom, but. This is up the right side, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, and they go down one, two, three. A four to three out for out number three. We'll head to the bottom of the second post 77, leading two to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, five, six, and seven do up. John Donovan, John Mercury, and Brendan DeMarco for Lowell Post 87. Lowell was in the States last season. They won zone five, but fell in the States. They went 0-2 in the state tournament. But certainly a lot of returning talent from their roster last season. So they're certainly a contender in zone five, along with Ashland, of course. Oh, and two. Wind up and the pitch. 
And this is ripped up the right side, but handled by Glassburn. Throw to first, a little low, but no problem. Tomaselli pulls it up. Four to three, four out number one. John Mercury will step in. We were uh, told earlier. And this center. is hit in the air and it'll drop in front of Calabrese in center field. A one out single for Mercury. Brendan DeMarco will step in. Why do they always get a hit right in mid sentence? We were told <laughs> we were told to show some fans because they wanted to do the wave. So I'll just instruct our cameraman to uh, pay in the crowd in left field so they can do the wave for us. Brendan DeMarco steps in. There's a strike. That was the second hit of the game for Lowell. Brennan DeMarco against uh, post 77 on June 26 went one for three and was hit by a pitch. Checking at first, and that was close, but the runner apparently safe. There was really no ruling by the infield umpire, but that typically means he was safe. Runner taking off now as this is fisted up the right side. That'll trickle into right field. Here comes Mercury heading over to third, and that's where he will stop. So it's a single for DeMarco. Runners on the corners with one out for post 87. Pat Crowley will come to the plate. A little hit and run action for Lowell. The uh, ball went into the vacated second base area. Cole Glassburn was going over to cover Second base on the steal. Swing and a miss, so and one. That's a communication thing between shortstop and second baseman, who's gonna get the cover. Runner taking off from first as this is hit in the air. It'll drop into center field. One run is in, the throw in, and the lead runner gonna be stopped at third. It'll be an RBI single for Crowley. John Mercury comes around to score. Brandon DeMarco up to third. Still only one out for Lowell. That'll bring up Luke Silva, the second baseman. I was gonna say this before we got rudely interrupted uh, last inning, is this game here is a potential trap game for Ashland after that. Uh, There's a strike. Trouncing of, uh, is that the right word? Trouncing of Hudson last yeah, night? Yeah, I'd say so. So a two to one ball game now in the bottom of the second. Runner taking off from first once again as Jewett will throw to third and he'll throw it in the left field and a run's gonna score. It's going to be a two to two ball game. And that throw plagued uh, Jewett like it plagued Gerard last night for Hudson. He th was throwing the ball all over the place. Probably should have just ate it. That wasn't even close. It certainly wasn't. So Crowley up to third, and we are all knotted up. That's fouled away. Now the Ashland infield has to move all the way in on the grass to cut a run off at the plate. Ward set to deal. Up high. One and one. So Lowell's shown they're gonna be aggressive on the bases. And this is up the left side, past the dive of the third baseman. Another run is in to score. Lowell has taken a three to two lead. An RBI single for Luke Silva. Here goes Obed to have a conversation with Owen Ward. Still only one out, Edgar Velasquez, top of the order for post 87. This is an unusual spot for post 77. They don't yes. find themselves behind. Certainly is. Lowell has 
kind of been the thorn in post 77 side as of late. Yeah, they've hit the ball three times hard this inning. And that has been a rare sight against Owen Ward this season so far. But Coach Obed trying to settle down his infield. A 3-2 lead for Lowell. We are in the bottom of the second. Lowell, the home team today, despite the fact we are at Ashland Middle School. And Lowell right now playing like it's their home field. Who's got a better beard, Jake Obed or the Lowell coach? What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty close. I'll be a homer and say Obed. Throw up to second, runner safe. Pretty good throw, but a little off the mark. Stolen bag for Silva. Well, they've decided they're going to run on Sean Jewett until he can throw him out. They're going to continue to do it. I think the big question in this game is going to be, can this post-77 lineup get to Gishier? Down low, gets away from Jewett. Throw to third is high. Into left field it goes, but the runner trips at third. Another errant throw there. That is the second error of the game for post 77. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll get down for a hit. Another post 87 run comes around to score. An RBI single for Edgar Velasquez. And that'll bring up Thomas Hassett, the first baseman. Let's have a little gentleman's bet here. Will the runner be taken off? Well, it does look like post 77 is going to get some warm up action. Throw over to first, runner back safe. Looks like Louis Dennison is going to get loose. Or Andrew Sternick. Checking at first, runner back safe. Runner with a lead at first, throw over, nearly got him. Little dugout making all kinds of noise. They're the home team, they can do pretty much whatever they want. Runner with a significant lead at first, that's fouled into the backstop. Well, it's certainly a rare sight to see Jewett off with a number of throws so far today. Yep, getting a little greedy lead over there at first base. And he's taking off, up the right side, that'll get into right field. Lead runner being waved around to third, the throw over is cut off. So it's a single for Hassett, Edgar Velasquez reaches third, Kyle DeRoma to the plate. I think we're gonna have a change. Gonna be Glassburn, I think. Yeah, it looks like we might. We'll see if he takes the ball. And he will, so we will have a pitching change for post 77. It's a four to two low lead, and they have two on base with one out, threatening for more. Looks like Cole Glassburn will take over, will take a timeout. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. New pitcher for Ashland post 77, Cole Glassburn takes over. Andrew Sternick moves over to second base. Or enters the game to take over at second base. Kyle DeRoma, the catcher, steps in. Two on, one out, four already in for Lowell. Breaking pitch down low, and that got a little bit away from Jewett, and that allows Hassett to advance to second base. Bit of a wild pitch there. John's got to stay in the game mentally. Glassburn deals a strike, one and one. That was a generous strike. Cole's got a fastball, curveball, changeup, and he will even quick pitch you before you realize it. Here's the one-one, down low. 
He'll even drop down to the side. He'll kick his leg out. Two and one. Breaking pitch, apparently inside. Not very tight, sort of a looping breaking pitch. A 3-1, and this is up the right side foul. That'll fill up the count. I think if you're Glassburn, just throw strikes. Yeah, but he's got a uh, incredibly uh, pliable arm. He can come out 32 degree weather and throw heat. Plays long toss at 300 feet. And this is hit in the air over to center field and caught. Runner from third is going to tag and will score easily. It's a 5-2 game. Well, the lower hitter wasn't tricked with that quick pitch. So a sacrifice RBI fly out for DeRoma. Velasquez scores. Hassett remains at second. Tyler Hoey to the plate. And Lowell has batted around here in this bottom of the second. You think Lowell's been watching our uh, games on YouTube? You bet. Inside. Usually that quick pitch is a surprise. Glassburn deals. There's a strike. One and one. Bashley can get out of this inning without any further damage. That'll be a victory for them. And this is a slow roller up the left side, and it grabbed by Horning, who trips up. Everybody's safe. And that tricky infield getting the best of Horning there. A single for Hoey. That'll bring up John Donovan. I thought the base runner had blocked Jackson out, but evidently the base umpire doesn't agree with me. And I probably got a bad angle, too. Cole's got to be mindful of the runner at first base. There's a strike. Checking at first, runner back safe. That would have been a lot closer had it been uh, not so high. Pretty good move by Cole. Glassburn deals, runner from first taking off. Jewett will throw up to second, and the runner is out. They get him out to end the inning, so Hoey is caught stealing, but Lowell post 87 plates five runs in the bottom of the second, and it's a five to two game as we head to the top of the third on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, top of the order for post 77. Nick Calabrese, Kevin Balowitz, Jackson Horning to face Zach Ishier, who so far has pitched a pretty good ball game. Wind up and the pitch. This hit high in the air, in foul territory, and no one can get there. Into the crowd, it was in the, uh, into the crowd. That's right. Did you get that, uh, Connor? Oh, and one. Fans diving up for that ball. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson on the call for Ashland Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera. Gishier set to deal. There's a strike. Oh, and two. Gishier has pitched well so far for post 87. This is up the right side, grabbed by the first baseman, throw over to Gishier, gets away. And now Calabrese is going to round first, head to second, and the throw over to second is going to get into left field, but Calabrese will stay at second base. So a single for Calabrese, and then he reaches second on the error. That'll bring up Kevin Balowitz. Well, post 77 could certainly use some runners in scoring position. So they find themselves down five to two. Well, Gilshire, uh, besides his moss, has some spectacles on. Reminds me of one of those uh, movie people, movie stars. Which one? From, uh, oh, from that uh, hockey movie, uh, The Hanson Brothers. Slapshot. Slapshot, that's what it is. Do you agree with me or do you don't? 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Gishier takes a look at second and deals. And this is hit foul out of play. Heads up play by the catcher to back up that uh, bad throw. But then he, in turn, made a bad throw and threw it in the outfield. It's a third error of the game for Lowell. Line up and the pitch down low. Gilshear uh, stays in his set for a very long time. I thought uh, Ballots was going to call a timeout. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. One and two count. Outfield playing straight up. Set to deliver. Foul tip. Jackson Horning due up next. Kishir takes a look at second and deals. And this is up the left side, grabbed by the third baseman, throw over to second. Did they get him? Yes, they did. So they end up getting Calabrese out, trying to head to third. Balowitz reaches on the fielder's choice. That'll bring up Jackson Horning. You got to wait till you see air between the, the hand and the... Uh... Hand of the ball before you take off. He didn't do it. I think he wanted just a little too far by the time he realized it. Too late. Yeah, well, that's why you got to wait to see, see some air. Horning fouls this one away. Gilshia has got some pretty good giddy up when he wants to throw the heater. Time called by the hitter. Hornung hit a two RBI triple his last time up back in the first inning. Score the two runs of the day for post 77. And there's a called strike, 0 and 2. One on, one out, four post 77. Horning at the plate, Dom Cavanaugh do up next. Wind up and the pitch. And this is going to take a couple hops up the left side of the infield. That'll get through into left field. Everybody's going to be safe. Horning with a single. That's where that base running mistake uh, comes into play. That should have scored a run. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh, the right fielder. He struck out back in the first inning. Two on, one out. Seems like Ashland has got the target on their back and it probably will be that way for the rest of the year. Down low. Dom didn't have too much luck with Gilshear his first time, but I don't think. Gishier takes a look at second and deals. Swing and a miss. One and one is the count. Gishier to the set. Down low. Two and one on Kavanaugh. This appeal by the catcher wasn't even close. Grab 
Fishier certainly taking his time between pitches. Cavanaugh hitting a 450 so far this season. There's a strike. It's the second pitch that they haven't been happy with that really down low in this strike zone. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit in the air over to left field and it is caught for the second out of the inning. Runners stay put. That'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. Gilshia flashes a smile there. Ball stayed in the yard. Gishier set to deliver. Down low. Sean, ever the competitor, will probably want to atone for his earlier sins. And just Who can play at that stall game? They can, uh, batters can call time. This year looks at second and delivers. Down low. Two and oh. Even though those bats are 32 ounces, you stand up at the plate holding them up for a while, they get a little bit heavy. Back elbow tends to drop a little bit. Wind up and the pitch. Hit high in the air over to left field, and it's caught for the third out of the inning. We will head to the bottom of the third. It's Lowell leading Ashland 5-2 to two on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning, a 5-2 to two lead for Lowell post 87. 3-4 and 5 to up, Kyle DeRoma, Tyler Hoey, John Donovan. And keep in mind, Lowell is the home team, despite the fact we are at Ashland Middle School due to a field conflict in Lowell. This game moved to Ashland. As John Donovan steps in, and excuse me, it's John Donovan, John Mercury, and Brendan DeMarco to the plate to start off this inning. First pitch is inside. Cole Glassburn continuing his relief effort. Came in during the second inning after starter Owen Ward struggled a bit. There's a strike, one and one. Owen Ward went an inning and a third, giving up four runs, two of which were earned. Actually, excuse me, all five of those runs were charged to Ward. Three were earned. Glassburn set to deal. Down low. Two and one. Wind up and the pitch. This is up the right side, grabbed by Thomas Selly, and he'll step on the bag for the out. A three unassisted to start off the third inning. And that'll bring up John Mercury. John Mercury singled and scored a run as part of the five run bottom of the second for Lowell. There's a strike. And this is hit up the right side. Tomaselli handles it, no problem. A little liner for out number two. Brandon DeMarco will step in. Marco also singled in, scored a run on a Jouet throwing error in the five run bottom of the second. Take strike one here. 
Line up and the pitch. Inside. One and one. Swing and a miss. One and two. The one two pitch. Fouled away. He deals. There's strike three. One, two, three, they go. In the bottom of the third to the top of the fourth, we go. Lowell leading Ashland 5 to 2 on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Andrew Sternick stepping to the plate for post 77. He's coming for Drew Rank Torrey. Sternick took over at second base, so Glassburn could move over to the pitcher's mound, and that actually forced post 77 to lose their DH. Oh, and one on Sternick. Wind up and the pitch, down low. Good block by the catcher. Well, so far, Zach Ishier throwing a pretty good ball game for Lowell. It was a very important inning for uh, post 77, shutting down Lowell. And this is up the right side, foul. They Went. needed that uh, inning like oxygen. They certainly did. One, two, swing and a miss. And that's out number one. That'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. We're missing one of the Velasquez brothers playing shortstop today. And he'll get a piece of this one over to left field. That'll drop in for a base hit. A one out single for Glassburn. Helps himself a little bit. He had a triple last night. That'll bring up Ben Fink. The now infamous Ben Fink. Time called. Kyle DeRoma wants to chat with Zach Gishier. And in the meantime, Ben Fink going to take this opportunity to talk to Coach Obit. Yeah. Gishier doesn't know that uh, Cole's not going to steal. We know that, but. And this too much information moment is brought to you by Larry Sacklad. Uh, that was sort of a uh, lollipop pickoff throw there. Well, Glassburn does have blazing speed at times. Never. There's a strike. I talked to him before game. Larry, I'm trying to deceive the scouts here. Yeah, but. You're killing me. They're not listening <laughs> to game live. Swing and a miss. Ooh, they might be listening to you because you tend to give out some good information. Right, bad swing. <laughs> bad, bad I swing. I think Fink was trying to hold there, but just kind of let it go. Oh. oh, that was a really bad swing. The 0-2. Gets a piece of this one into right field, it goes, and that'll get through for a base hit. So it'll be two on with one out. So Fink makes up for the bad swing with a nice hit, and that'll bring up Matt Tomaselli. Tomaselli rounded out his last time up to end the second inning. Low in, low infielders have no intention of keeping Glassburn close. Swing and a miss there. <laughs> Gishier deals. 
Down low, gets away from the catcher. Both runners are going to advance. I was just going to say that they weren't holding him on at all. He could have walked down to third base. I'm giving that a pass ball. You're tough. You're really tough. I think he should have had it. It did bounce, though. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. Maybe you're right. I'll go wild pitch. I missed the bounce. Wild pitch. Two out of three. All right. Two out of three. I'm outvoted. Wild pitch it is. There's a strike. Not going to matter unless Tomaselli does something here with Gilshear. Nick Calabrese due up next. First base is clear. The 1 2 up high. Two and two. Infield back, just something on the ground, score a run. Called strike. Looked a little low from here, but the umpire liked it. Two I away. Don't know. That's the, like the third call he's made that's been uh, uh, ankle high. Yeah. I didn't like it. What'd you, you think, it, Steve? What'd you think, Steve? Keep in mind, it landed low. It doesn't mean that it crossed the plate low. I thought it crossed the plate low. I thought it crossed the plate. Hey, is there any correlation between. Oh, well, I'm not going to say it. Here's Nick Calabrese, fouls it away. Calabrese is one for two today, reached on an error, scored a run, and singled. The lefty steps back in, two on, two outs. Gilshire in a little bit of a jam, but close to getting out of it. Inside, one and one. I don't know what Lowell's groaning about. They got a couple of ankle high calls. The 1-1 hit high in the air, and it is going to be caught by the third baseman for the third and final out of the top of the fourth. To the bottom of the fourth we go. It's Lowell leading Ashland 5-2 on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fourth inning. Lowell post 87 coming to the plate to face Cole Glassburn. 8, 9, and 1 do up Pat Crowley, Luke Silva, and Edgar Velasquez to face Cole Glassburn, who has really settled down this whole lineup since coming in to relieve Owen Ward. Inside, 1 and 0. Oh. Crowley has singled today and scored a run. And he will put this one up the middle. Off of Horning it goes, and he is going to reach. That was certainly a tough play to make. I'm going to give him a single on that one. Luke Silva will step in. I just think it was a tough play to make. I'm with Tom on that one. I think that was a tough bounce. Very tough bounce. So. Awkward bounce. And with, well, the, with the way this infield is, I don't know. There's a ball. Larry insists that it's a beautifully maintained infield. <laughs> he, he's insistent. Well, I didn't say that in the first inning when Lowell made a couple errors. It here's just changed the my one, mind. Here's the 1 0. Nice breaking pitch. 1 and 1. So let's say that your opinion varies. It does. <laughs> At least you admit it. Yes. Hit high in the air, right side. Can anyone get there? Yes! Andrew Sternick able to get there. Sternick took over for Glassburn as the second baseman once Glassburn moved over to the pitcher's mound. And he makes a nice catch there for out number one. That'll bring up Edgar Velasquez, the center fielder. No way Tomaselli had a chance at that ball. Not a chance. Had to be Sternick. There's a strike. Well, Cole has calmed things down for the time being. The 0-1, up high, and Jewett thought about a back pick there. Now when you're behind 5-2. to two. The 1-1, one -one. breaking pitch, a little low, says the home plate umpire, 2-1. and one. 
Steve Cole Glassburn will show you lots of different angles. He'll drop down to the side. He'll quick pitch you, which he already did already. Trying to catch the runner off guard at first. He'll kick his leg out in a little herky-jerky motion. That was really decent fastball for a kid his size. The 2-1. Hit in the air over to right center and a dive, but it's going to fall out of the glove of Calabrese. And it'll be a single for Velasquez. I give him an 8.93 for effort on that one. Great effort. Just came up a, a yep. tad short. Yeah. That would have been an incredible yeah. catch. Not for lack of trying. If he made that, that'd be like a Jackie Bradley catch. That would have been yeah. the highlight reel. Now, that wasn't a pizza review. That was a yeah. a uh, <laughs> an attempt to make a catch on a ball. Thomas Hassett steps in. Dangerous hitter here. He'll put this up the right side. Handled by Sternick. Throw to second for one. Now over to first. Did they get him? Yes. Four, six, three. Double play to wrap up the bottom of the fourth. We'll head to the top of the fifth. Lowell leading Ashland 5-2 to two on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, 3-4-5. and five. Due up, four post 77. Or excuse me, 2-3-4 and four due up, four post 77. Just looking at the wrong score sheet there as Kevin Balowitz steps in, takes ball one. Balowitz, Hornung, and Kavanaugh due up. Wind up and the pitch by Gishier. Swing and a miss. One and one. Well, I think Zach Gishier certainly going to be the go to guy for Lowell in these big games. Down low. Two and one on Balowitz, who has reached on an error and flown out so far. Or reached on a fielder's choice. Up high. He's going to the rink after this. <laughs> He's got his sticks and his skates in the car. A true hockey player. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Him and his brothers got a game going tonight. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike that'll fill up the count. Lowell team certainly relishing in uh holds and walks. Here's what they're relishing, the fact that Jackson Horning booted a ball. They know he's a uh, boss as far as post 77 is concerned. And he did rip one in the left center field gap in the first inning. They weren't laughing about that. I wouldn't imagine so. No. And Horning gets a piece of this one up the left side. Handled by the shortstop. Flip to second for one. Throw over to first, not in tie. So Horning reaches on the six to four fielder's choice. One away. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. See how aggressive Coach Obed's going to be. Horning, three sports star, football, hockey, and baseball. Got great speed. But they know that, I think. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Kavanaugh 0 for 2 so far today. Trying a little repeat of last night's action. Gishier set to deal, down low. Wind up and the pitch, up high. Two and one is the count on Kavanaugh and Kyle DeRoma wants a word with Gishier. Thought it was manager. I don't know why. Coach Gath going to come out, check on his pitcher. A little six and three on the season. They have a whole lot of baseball left to be played in the next couple of weeks, or the rest of this week and next week. And it's playoff time for zone five. It's a few zones that wrap up this weekend. I know zone five goes a little later than most zones to try and stretch things out a little bit. Of course, they play less games than That's most right. as well. So, Check it at first, runner back safe. That clearly wasn't his best move. 
Is I know you there move. Up high. And for those of you planning ahead for the States, Steve, you had some valuable information of when Zone 5 would play. Right, and it could be one of these two teams, of course. There's a strike, and Kavanaugh is not happy. And the umpire is not going to be happy with that bat foot. Nope. Yeah, so whoever refs in zone five will play the 10 a.m. game that Saturday. So if you're planning ahead, there you go, 10 a.m. That's uh, Saturday, I believe. The, tw the 27th. 27th. Yep. Over. I guess Tom gave me the bad news. He told me to be there at 2. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're Larry Sacklad, you can show up at like 5 p.m. Runner taking off from first. That pitch was low. Kavanaugh is going to walk. The throw to second. And it doesn't matter anyway, but the runner is safe. I thought the umpire rung him up, but uh, he made some other utterance. Sean Jewett will step in. One out, two on. Big opportunity. Yes, with the time slots, it's not determined by... The team's location, it's a random draw by zone. Of course, the host team is locked into the night slot. Was that Milford? Yes. So zone five just happened to draw the 10 a.m. Saturday game. Line up and the pitch. And this is ripped into left field. That'll drop in for a hit. And the lead runner is going to be held up. A good oh. throw in from Brendan DeMarco. But it'll be bases loaded for post 77. Jackson Horning slammed on the brakes rounding third. That'll bring up Andrew Sternick. Nice play by the left fielder getting that ball in. And he slipped too. So Horning thought long and hard about shooting for home, but that's fouled away. A wise move to stay at third. Yeah, I, I think uh, he was going to get the horse collar by Jake Obed if he went one more foot. Wind up and the pitch, up high. What are you seeing, Steve? A little release point uh, issue with Gilshare? He's a little here, a little there, a little everywhere. Is that what the coach talked to him about? Here's the 1-1. One -one. Upstairs. I'm not sure what they talked about, but I don't think it worked. <laughs> well, you told me last night you lip read. I did not say that. That's not a skill I have. 2-1 pitch. And there's a strike, and I think the hitter was looking for time. Well, he made well, he a didn't quick get pitch. It. Yeah. And the umpire does not have to grant time. Now he's in the hole with two strikes. Two and two. Swing and a miss. Out number two. That'll bring up Cole Glassburn. Two outs, bases loaded. Post 77 could certainly use a hit here. I guess what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Cole Glassburn quick pitch Lowell. Lowell just quick pitched Ashland. Hope Cole's patient. And he will hit this one in the air in front of the third baseman. Throw to first is going to get away from the first baseman. One run already in. Here comes Kavanaugh. He'll score as well. Oh. And it's a five to four ball game. Got to wipe the blood off that ball. Right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So it was a smash. Glassburn reaches on the errant throw. Hornung scores, Kavanaugh scores. Post 77 in business. First and third, two outs. Ben Fink to the plate. Would you go a hit or an error there, Tom? I got an error. How far did that ball travel, you reckon? That was an errant throw. That traveled about... Or a mishandle by the third uh, first base. That tra ball six. traveled about 83 feet. Okay. There's definitely an error then in there. Uh-oh, they got the runner in the pickle at first base. And, and now the runner from third going to take off and try to score, but it doesn't matter because Glassburn was tagged. They were trying to trick Lowell there, but they do get two runs... And it's a one-run ball game as we head to the bottom of the fifth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, 3-4 and 5 due up for Lowell post 87. It's a 5-4 Lowell lead. 
Post 77 plates two runs in the top of the fifth. Kyle DeRoma, Tyler Hoey, John Donovan do up four low, three, four, and five to face Cole Glassburn. That's fouled away. Oh and one. We'll recap the top half of the fifth. Keep in mind, despite the fact we are at Ashland Middle School for this game, Ashland is the away team due to a field conflict at Lowell. This game was moved to Ashland. And this is ripped into center field. That'll get in there for a base hit by DeRoma. He's going to round first, but stay there. A good throw in by Calabrese. A leadoff single for the catcher. Now the cleanup man, Tyler Hoey, will step in. Got good speed out in center field. He cut that ball off. Great job out there. Certainly was. That ball was smacked a long way. To hold it to a single on that, that's a win. It's 380 feet to that fence. Last burn set to deal. There's a strike. So last inning, it started off with a Balowitz walk, and then Horning hit into a fielder's choice. Kavanaugh walked. And then Jouette with a single. There's a strike. Drew thought about a back pick there, but held. And then Sternick struck out. And then Glassburn reached on an error, which scored two runs. And then he was later picked off to end the inning. Did you see that hesitation move by Glassburn, Steve? He'll stop with his leg. Sean Jewett's got to realize Dom Kavanaugh is going to be aware of that back pick. Swing and a miss. Out number one. He's playing so deep in right field if he airmails the throw. That runner from first has got third base. John Donovan, the DH, will step in. It's a little curious why Dom Kavanaugh is playing so deep in right. Lowell either has Gishier loosening up or someone getting loose to come into the game for Gishier. I believe it's just Gishier getting loose. Swing and a miss. Yep. Uh, attempted hold of a check swing there. That would be a non-check, right, Steve? We'll go with the umpire. It's a non-check if he doesn't check. The NC. Non-check. Okay. There's strike two. Glassburn just moving right along. He's put out the fire for the time being. Get the club back in the game. A little outside, one and two. Just a little mystified by the post-77 uh, outfield alignment. Ooh, that hit him. Hope he's all right. That'll put two on with one out. That'll bring up John Mercury, the right fielder. Well, at least the kid got up, unlike last night where the kid laid down on the ground for three to four minutes. Was that all? Uh, yeah, it was pretty close. Oh. Felt like an hour, but... I thought I heard the uh, what was it, uh, Hudson Ambulance Company. Yeah. Wind up in the pitch. Down low. No, I was walking out to the parking lot, and I found a bat in the parking lot. I think that was where that bat landed from that... Bat flip. <laughs> That's far, man. It yeah. certainly was. Another low pitch there. Two and oh. And now Jewett wants a word with Glassburn. Try to settle him down a bit. Well, Dom Kavanaugh hit their shortstop, the Hudson shortstop, right on the uh, the bone of his shoulder. It was a legit but there was no intent whatsoever. No. It just hurt, that's all. Yeah, and he uh, played dead for three or four minutes, and then finally decided he was going to get back in the game. But that started everything from there. Glassburn deals. This is hit in the air over to right field. That's going to be trouble. That'll get down. Lead runner held up at third. It's bases loaded, one out for post 87. And just like that, Lowell threatening once again. Brendan DeMarco, the left fielder, will step in. Oh. Dom Kavanaugh was playing in where I think he should have been playing. He might have caught that ball.
DeMarco, one for two today, has also scored a run. That pitch outside. Need a ground ball right here. I would say so. There's a strike, one and one. Or a strikeout. Well, they're not playing a double. Strikeout would, would work, too. <laughs> they're not playing a double play depth up the middle. They're playing back. The ground ball, you're probably going to fire home first. Well, they're not playing in. And this is up the left side. The throw is home over to Jewett, and they get one. So there's two away. DeMarco reaches on the 5-2 to two fielder's choice. That was heads up by Hornung, rotating over to third base because that was vacated by Fink, who threw home. Two away, Pat Crowley stepping in. That's why he's going to do well at Skidmore once his coach gets a hold of him. Wind up and the pitch. And this is a fair ball up the right side, handled by Sternick. Throw to first, no problem. Four to three for out number three, despite loading the bases with one out. No damage done by Lowell Post 87. It remains a five to four Lowell lead as we head to the top of, top of the sixth inning. A five to four Lowell lead. Post 77 trying to strike back. Eight, nine, and one to up Ben Fink, Matt Tomaselli, Nick Calabresi. Post 77 got two runs in the top of the fifth. And this is up the middle, past the reach of Gishier and the second baseman. And it's a single for Ben Fink. That'll bring up Matt Tomaselli. And actually, we're going to have a pinch hitter. This is Lawrence Tang. Lawrence Tang stepping in to pinch hit for Tomaselli. He hit a 359-foot bomb last night. A 15-year-old, I was informed, not 14 anymore, Belmont Hill. And he goes by Larry. As some other people here with us on the broadcast, that pitch inside, one and oh. I like this kid, he's from Hopkins and two. Maybe transfer from Belmont Hill to Hopkins Hopk and I. Do you think one can dream, right? Yeah, one can dream. Feel some rain coming down. There's a strike, one and one. And you had him all teed up for a home run last night, Tom. <laughs> that was close. But unfortunately, close only counts in horseshoes. And hand grenades. Wind up in the pitch, it's a butt. And it's going to be a slow roller, picked up, throw to first, and it'll be in time. So a little trickery there. Fink pushed up to scoring position. One to three on the out. That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. Not sure, not sure why Coach Obid would uh, not have Tomaselli bunting in that uh, spot there. And saving Tang for later. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, well, you and I are thinking. Well, I think his thought was they yes. didn't expect him to bunt, so he thought maybe he'll reach. This gets away from the catcher runner, heading over to third. The throw to third, is it in time? Yes! Coach Obid heavily disagrees, but Fink called out. There's no appeal. He was safe. Well, the umpire was blocked out, so there's no possible way he could see that. Yeah, I don't think the umpire had a very good angle on it for sure. And Fink's going to stay on the base? I mean, there's judgment call. Right, Steve? And Coach Obid wants a discussion amongst the umpires to talk about this situation. Fink's in shock. I thought it was very close. Third baseman is smiling because he know he didn't get the tag down. They're not going to change it. We'll rewind the tape for him if they want to review it. Well, unfortunately, he's called out. Not a very good call, not a very good angle by the umpire. They're, they're asking for an instant replay, Tom. Can you provide it? We could. We could rewind the YouTube feed. To Jake Obed challenge? Well, unfortunately, tip. the replay won't matter. <laughs> I wish it would. It would be umpire. It's really up to the umpire who made the call to ask his partner for help. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. 
So personally, I think the plate umpire would have had a pretty good view of that slide. So, but obviously, but if the, the plate umpire saw something different, can he come in and say, "Hey, I think he was safe"? It's not kosher. Ah. And there's a strikeout to wrap up the inning. In any case, we'll head to the bottom of the six. Lowell leading Ashland 5-4 to four on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, 9-1 and 2 do up for Lowell post 87. A 5-4 to four Lowell lead. A controversial top of the sixth. Ben Fink took off from second to go to third when the ball got a little bit away from the catcher, Kyle DeRoma. And he was called out, but there was heavy belief that he was safe. I thought he was safe. Larry and Steve thought he was safe. So, but in any case, he was out. Well, you know, according to the look, umpire, the, the runner look. thought he was out. Clearly, he was smiling. I mean, the third baseman was smiling because he knew. I thought it was close, though. I did think it was very close. He was safe. The yeah. one-one. It was missed badly. Maybe we had a Metro Daily West uh, photographer catching that. Three and one now on Silva. Well, if you're Ashland, you certainly want to keep Lowell at bay here because coming up next inning, you got Balowitz, Hornung, and Cavanaugh do up. There's a walk. Not what you wanted right there. Nope. Edgar Velasquez will step in. He's two for three today. Lowell can put some pressure on Ashland by putting that run game in the motion as they did earlier in the game. Velasquez and Coach Gath going to talk some strategy. I got a feeling Velasquez may drop a bunt down here and try and sacrifice the runner. See if he squares. Yep, called that one. And the runner taking off from first row to second. Called safe. I don't know about that one either. Stolen base for Silva. Well, safe. Safe. Safe, safe all the way on that. That I mean, wasn't if, close. I mean, right. if he was SpongeBob, maybe. But could've, he was safe. Could have been a nice makeup call there. I agree with that. <laughs> Bunt pulled back. But, Tom, keep in mind for a makeup call, the umpire must first admit that he was wrong on That's the original right. call. That's true. That's a post-game interview question. Runner on second. Here's a bunt up the third base side. Picked up by Glassburn. Throw to first. In time. One away. Nice throw over by Glassburn. Got it there just in time, but job well done by Velasquez. Silva pushed up to third. Now you got Thomas Hassett stepping in. I think Cole's going to pitch out of the full windup. One out, runner on third. Fouled away. Would you consider that a full windup, the way he's got his foot hooked to the rubber, Steve? Yes. He would be compliant, you could say. There's a full windup there, ball one. You gotta have your foot, what, 90 degrees to be considered the stretch? Two and one. Yep, deception is part of Cole's game. Kid's a good hitter, has it. Fouled away, two and two. Big pitch here. That was the quick pitch. Inside. Full count now. Huge crowd here tonight. And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught. Runner from third gonna tag. And the throw in, not in time. It's a six to four game. A sacrifice RBI fly out by Thomas Asset. Luke Silva comes around to score. Two outs in the inning. Six to four is the score. Kyle DeRoma to the plate. A 
Lowell trying to hand post 77 their first loss of the season. There's a strike. And for those of you just joining us, keep in mind this is the bottom of the six. Lowell is the home team, despite the fact we are at Ashland Middle School. That pitch is down low, one and one. I don't know, guys. I just get the strange feeling that this is the matchup you'll see in the zone finals. I get a feeling this is a trap game after last night. Fouled away, two and two. I have a feeling you might, you might be right. It'll be the same one as last year. Yep. Two game elimination, right? Mm hmm. Just outside, full count. Uh, both of these teams seem very composed, too. They, they, they don't lose their cool over stuff. So that certainly helps come playoff time. Oh, certainly does. And this is ripped into right field. That'll get down for a base hit. A two-out single for DeRoma, and that'll bring up Tyler Hoey. Well, Lowell certainly hasn't taken the foot off the gas. See what the Lowell coach does with the run game here. Cole's been pretty good keeping the runners close. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. The 0 1 inside, and the hitter was trying to get the free bag there. Glassburn deals. And outside says the home plate umpire 2 and 1. I think they're mocking Sean Jewett for threatening to throw down at first base. Hit high in the air, right side in fair territory. Ranging back is Sternick able to make the catch. Nearly a collision between Sternick and Kavanaugh. And that'll retire the side in the bottom of the six. Post 77 down to their final three outs as we head to the top of the seventh on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. Top of the seventh inning, post 77 down to their final three outs, trailing six to four. Two, three, and four do up. Kevin Balowitz, Jackson Hornung, and Dom Cavanaugh to face Zach Gishier. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Oh, and one. So far today, Balowitz is 0 for 2. He's reached on an area and a fielder's choice and walked. This year, trying to go the complete game. Nobody warming, low. so it looks like it's going to be his game all the way. Unless they get a position player that will come in if he gets in trouble. Post 77, the away team here at Ashland Middle School today. This game was supposed to take place in Lowell, but due to a field conflict, it's right here at Ashland, but post 77 is the away team. Two and one on Balowitz. Gilshire did have a little bout with wildness in the middle part of the game, but he's... He's calmed things down. Gashir deals. And this is hit in the air over to right field. That'll drop in. And it's going to roll all the way towards the wall. Balowitz rounding first, heading over to second. The throw in is going to be caught by the shortstop. And it's a stand-up double to start off the top of the seventh. Jackson Horney's got to be really patient here. He, he can tie the game with one swing. But if he's over anxious, as he was in his previous at bat, he'll beat the ball in the dirt. Horning steps in. And there's a strike. He can hit in any count. Gilshire knows it too. Set to deliver. That is low. It's an open base, so Gilshire could say, well, you know what? I'm not going to give up a, a ding-dong here. Inside. 
Maybe he wants to take his chances with Dom Cavanaugh, who he's had some luck with. Second baseman kicking dirt over there on Balowitz. Fouled away. He was all wound up for that swing. Two and two is the count on Hornan. 130 footer will do. And guys, I actually believe, I'm trying to find my low roster, but I believe we have a relief pitcher out there. This year is number 29. This is number nine on the mound. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle, handled by the second baseman. Throw to first, and they get the out. But Balowitz pushed up to third. Yeah, you're right. Number nine has come in. But he looks sort of like Gilshire. Certainly does. Sands glasses, so maybe they are the Hanson brothers, Steve. It's entirely possible. <laughs> Here's Dom Cavanaugh up high. One and oh. Hold on a minute. He's got two digits on the front of his jersey and one on his back. Well, that's the 87 for a little post 87. Oh, okay, all I got that. you. I got you. Line up and the pitch. Unfortunately, the little roster I have doesn't have the correct numbers. So trying to look for the lineup, but it is indeed a relief pitcher in there. The same delivery and everything. He deals up high. 77 needs a base runner. Drew Rancatori with a stick. Juet do up next. Down low. Two and one count. Well, Dom's got the count in his favor. You pick out what he likes. Wind up in the pitch. There's a called strike. Kavanaugh doesn't like it. And the umpire has probably had enough of Dom Kavanaugh tonight. That's the third time he's questioned a call from the home plate umpire. Ward is on the mound for Lowell, and he deals. And there's a walk. It's Chris Ward who's pitching for Lowell. So it's runners on the corners, one out. Four post 77, Sean Jewett coming to the plate. He lined a base hit down the left field line his last time up. I'm pretty shocked they took out Gishier. Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, surprised myself, you know, they both have the same uh, kind of moss as Dennis Eckersley would say, right? Gishier gave up four runs, two of which were earned in his six innings pitched. And he struck out five. I think the conversation is if uh, Dom Cavanaugh takes off, are you going to throw through? Or are you going to cut the ball off? Or what are you going to do? They've already made that decision. Chris Ward working from the stretch. Runners on the corners, one out. That pitch is low. Jake Obid giving instructions to the base runner at third base as to how far to shimmy down the line. Keep himself from getting picked off by the catcher. Wide up and the pitch. Outside, two and oh. Be very hard for the catcher to throw around Jewett. So the runner at third can get it. A decent lead down there. Ward set to deal. Breaking pitch up high, three and oh. Things get a little tight, Steve, when uh, you fall behind and you're alone on an island out there. This Jewett's got the takes on, I guarantee it. Wind up in the pitch. Up high, and it's a four pitch walk to Jewett. Is Drew Rancatori going to pinch it? Rancatori coming back into the game to pinch it for Sternick. Now he's got to be patient, seeing the pitcher throw four straight balls. And he's going to pitch out of the full windup. 
Bases loaded, one out. Big opportunity here for the Hopkinton Hiller. Down low. Catcher keeps it in front of him. Five straight balls. The 1-0. Down low. Can't find the plate. Is Ward having some control issues here? Drew's nickname is El Presidente. He will be the incoming president of the 2020 class at Hopkinton High School. El Pres, huh? El Presidente. And he doesn't do pizza reviews. <laughs> <laughs> you can call him El Prez if you want, as long as he gets a base hit here. I believe Chris Ward actually worked in the first time these two teams met. This is ripped up the right side. That'll get through. Here comes Balowitz around to score, and the lead runner behind him is held up. And now they're going to send him as the ball got away. Kavanaugh trying to score, and the game is tied. Six to six. Ooh. Drew Rancatori comes up in the clutch out. President Day. Rancatori with the RBI single heads over to second. Balowitz scores. Kavanaugh scores on an errant throw. Jewett up to third. And there's still only one out. Cole Glassburn steps in. He could be the winning pitcher if he closes things out in the seventh inning. It's a brand new ball game. And this is up the right side. That's going to get through. Here comes Jewett around to score. Post 77 has taken the lead. Seven to six, an RBI single for Cole Glassburn. Now the Lowell coach is gonna be saying to himself, why did I yank my pitcher? I'll bring up Ben Fink. Runners on first and third, still one out. I don't know, Steve, can uh, Coach Obed pinch run for the uh, wounded giraffe out there on third since he came in on the re-entry? We're going back in on the re-entry. Well, you can, but then you would lose the re-entry. Well, Ben Fink's up. Swing and a miss. Lowell does have action in their warm-up area. If, if he were at second, then maybe you think a little harder about it, but he, he's at third, so perhaps not. Ward. Would be an interesting time to lay down a bunt right here. Ward deals. In there for a strike, 0 oh and 2. Well, Gishier certainly must be disappointed after pitching a pretty brilliant game against this potent post-77 lineup. And then yeah. Ward comes in. Glassburn got caught in the pickle the last time. He's taken off. Runner from first taken off, and that is hit in the air foul. He'll have to go back. Count remains 0 oh and 2. That was a little bit better executed, but I don't know what they do with Drew Rancaturi at third base. So it'll be Lowell down to their last three outs, entering the bottom of the seventh. Runner taking off from first. The throw up is, there won't be a throw. Little optical illusion there. Glassburn gets the steal. That was the play. They weren't going to throw down, but they don't know what we know about Drew Rancaturi's speed. That it's very fast. <laughs> Swing and a miss, out number two. Matt Tomaselli will step in. Matt Tomaselli re-entering the batting order. He was pinch hit for by Tang his last time, I think. Yep. Wind up in the pitch, and therefore a strike. This, as I had mentioned earlier, he could have bunted the last time, and they would have Tang up here with a little bit of power, but I don't get paid to manage. Ward deals a swing and miss, so and two. You know what I mean, Steve? I know what you mean. They wasted Tang bunting, and they could have had Tomaselli bunt. Well, that's why Jake's over there and right, we're over that's here. Why. This is up the left side. Could be trouble. Grab by the shortstop. Throw to first just in time. Six to three on the out. But post 77 plates three runs and takes a seven to six lead as we head to the bottom of the seventh on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the seventh inning. Lowell post 87 down to their final three outs with Ashland on top. Seven to six 
A three run top of the seventh, four post 77. And this Ashland team just relentless. It seems like they just never go away. Unbelievable as they were able to take the lead. Let's recap the top of the seventh. It was started off by a Balowitz double. Hornung grounded out. Balowitz did push up on the ground out. Kavanaugh walked, Jouette walked to load up the bases. An RBI double by Drew Rankatori. And then another run scored on a misfire. And then an RBI hit by Glassburn made it seven to six. Well, post 77's gotta get their uniforms dirty. Nothing through the infield. Strike one to John Donovan. It's five, six, and seven due up for Lowell. John Donovan, John Mercury, Brandon DeMarco. We get Dom Cavanaugh playing third base as a little replacement, defensive replacement. Strike two from Glassburn. Nicole Glassburn, if this game ends the way post 77 wants it to, is certainly a hero today. That pitch down low, one keep, and two. Keep an eye on his delivery, Steve. You see what I mean? Dr. Deception out there. Glassburn went two for four at the plate. And since coming in to relieve Owen Ward, has pitched very well. So Coach Ovid has put Drew Rankatori over at first base, I think, where he played last night. And this is hit foul towards us, one and two. So he's changed up his corners. Glassburn has given up five hits and a run since coming in. Drew Rankatori a little bit taller than Matt Tomaselli. There's a strike, out number one. Ooh -ha. John Mercury will step in. John Babineau just erupted. He jumped about two feet in the air. Mercury is two for three today. Glassburn deals, swing and a miss. He's feeling it out there, he's feeling it. Noose is tightening on Lowell. And this is hit up the middle and dropped by Hornung. A rare error there. Mercury reaches on the E6. Tying run to the, or actually a tying run on base. Leading run to the plate, Brandon DeMarco. Now Lowell's got a little issue here. Are they are gonna send the runner and test Jewett's arm? It Last won't surprise. Keep them close. It won't surprise me if they send them the way they've been running today. Hey, we'll find run, out. You run into an out, or you get the base and put the tying run scoring position. The one zero. Outside. Well, that was certainly a rare mishap there by Hornung. And we're losing a little sunshine. We are. If we go into extras for some reason, light will become an issue. There's a strike. Two and one. I call that a quick pitch. Cole hasn't thrown over. Up high. Three and one. Brennan DeMarco, one for three today. Singled, reached on a fielder's choice, scored a run. Bottom of this Lowell order has been very good today against post-77 pitching. Glassburn's got a little adrenaline going. That's hit foul, full count. One out, runner on first, four post-87. A seven to six Ashland lead. Is he going to give him the 93 octane, or is he going to throw a yacker? Runner taking off. This is hit high in the air, very high in the air. Hornung ranging over. He'll make the catch. Two away. And the runner retreats back to first base. Pat Crowley will step in. He's two for three today. Post 77, one out away from going 12 and 0. Oh. 
Glassburn deals runner taking off from first. A throw up by Jewett. Over to second. And they got him. Game over. Makeup call. Bang. Sean Jewett ends it with a brilliant throw to second base. And John Mercury caught stealing. And post 77 walks away with a 7-6 victory over Lowell. I wouldn't call it a makeup call. He was out the whole way, Larry. I understand, yeah. but they think yeah. it's a makeup call. That wasn't no, a makeup call. No. He was out. That, that wasn't even close. And just like you said, you, you thought he would go. He did. What a win. Ash, Great comeback. Unbelievable. This team is never out of a game. Cole Glassburn, the winning pitcher, and I'd say tonight's MVP. He pitched very well in relief of Owen Ward, pitching six and two-thirds of an inning, giving up just one run to a very tough low lineup. He also went two for four at the plate, and he drove in a pair of runs as well. Cole Glassburn, your player of the game, without a doubt, as Ashland post-77 battles from behind and takes the 7-6 victory over Lowell. Ashland now 12-0 on the season. Lowell falls to 6-4. Just a tremendous performance here by Post 77, a team that just seems to never give in and never go away. Steve, any final thoughts? Well, I think we chatted right before the top of the seventh, right? I said this team is never out of a game. You said it's rally time. Sure enough. I think we were in agreement there. They, they proved us right. And this, you know, this team is never out of a game. No quit. And this is, you know, one of the first real tests that they faced. You know, they, they've had some games that have been kind of lopsided, and this is a good character-building win. It certainly was a great character-building win, and also a difficult win. I mean, there was three pretty costly errors that the post-77 defense made, but luckily it they weren't costly enough, I guess, as they yeah. pulled off the 7-6 win. You had some tough errors. You had a couple calls that didn't quite go your way. It is what it is. You just have to fight through it. Yep. And, you know, fortunately they were in a position to come back late in the game, and they did exactly that. So Lowell scores six runs on 11 hits, commits four errors, post 77, seven runs on eight hits, commits three errors. The final score for the final time. Ashland post 77 gets the comeback win over Lowell post 87, seven to six. Ashland post 77 stays undefeated, now 12 and 0 on the season. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partners, Steve Watson and Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you a whole lot next week. Bye, everybody.